Hey everybody, Jared back again, and we've got the Galaxy Note 2 in front of me. I'm going to give you my first initial impressions. Keep in mind, this is all in my opinion. Your opinion may differ completely. You may completely disagree with me and say I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm talking about. That's the beauty about being a human being in this world today. We're all allowed to have our own opinions. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, now, I've been rocking the Galaxy S3 as my daily driver for quite some time now, and... Um, you know, I'm in love with it. I'm absolutely in love with my Galaxy S3. The Galaxy Note 2 comes out, and a lot of people are falling in love with this. I think it's a great device. It's just not my preference. You know, some people don't mind the bigger screen. Some people want the bigger screen, and they love it. I'm not one of those people. I like big screens, but 4.8 inches is plenty big for me. Um, now, with that said... Let's go ahead and jump into the device of what it's used for. Uh, the device is obviously, in my opinion, used for those, um, you know, maybe graphics artists on the go, the business folk who need a lot of different business tools, such as the stylus, as well as um, students and so on. Now, there's a lot of other people out there, regular people, like my buddy What Would Josh Do, or Josh over at www.joshdew, which is his YouTube channel. Um, he's absolutely in love with the Galaxy Note 2. Um, it is his daily driver. It will continue to be his daily driver until something new comes out. My Galaxy S3 will, be, will continue to be my daily driver over this device, although this is a very, very nice device. Um, the display is not a pentile display anymore. It is a RGB display. It looks like Samsung took the community's words and listened and said, okay, fine, we'll give it the RGB display even though it's more expensive to manufacture. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Now we do have a 5.5 inch display, quite a bit bigger than the last one uh, being, I believe it was 5.3, um, if I can remember correctly. So it's still, it's a great device. Um, in my opinion, this is more of a multimedia type of device, but whatever. Um, the speed on this thing has been stupid blazing fast. I think Samsung did a wicked job. A lot of manufacturers are actually doing this now, um, doing great jobs, um, marrying two gigs of RAM with a quad core processor. I think that that's really the sweet spot, especially with Jelly Bean, which is what this comes with right out of the box. Now, unfortunately, my version, which is on the Bell network, um, hasn't had that multi-window capability enabled yet. Um, you know, I see all these videos on YouTube showing off the multi-window capability, which I think is awesome. I've been waiting for Android to get multi-window capability for so long, and Samsung is the first company to bring it out, and I love them for it. However, at least release that little tiny feature on all the devices. Why is it that there's devices in the US that have it and not in Canada? Don't tell me that's carrier specific. I don't want to hear that, oh, well, Bell's got to approve that update. That's BS. I don't even want to hear it. Um, but with that said, in, in the lack of that functionality, the device is still very, very usable, obviously, because the Galaxy, it's, it's basically a big Galaxy S3, like everybody says, um, you know, just with some other things. <laughs> Um, so anyways, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things I really like. I love the album. Love the album of the Galaxy uh, Galaxy Note 2. Got all these cool um, kind of ways you can look at your pictures and stuff. It's gimmicky. Is this practical? Uh, I don't know. Not really for me. Some of you guys might like it. Um, I don't. But it's it's still a neat feature, nevertheless. The uh, whoops, the pic, the camera application also is quite impressive. Um, the Galaxy S3. Um, oh shoot! <laughs> Hi, need to shave. Um, the Galaxy S3 it um, had some really really great features on it. Um, in in fact, I was really actually quite impressed with the camera application on the Galaxy S3. The Galaxy Note 2, however, they've really really stepped it up um, a notch there. Uh, so you've got a bunch of different effects. Or, I'm sorry, well, the same effects. I'm sorry, but a bunch of different settings in here that you can choose from. Lots of control over your photos. Um, contextual file name, take photos using voice, um, do, 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 do a bunch of other stuff going into effects here. You've got a bunch of different filters and things you can use if you like. Um, shooting modes, we've got low light shooting mode, which is something new. It, uh, when you are in a crappy lighting situation, go ahead and hit that and it'll do the best it can using, I believe, the software built in to try to increase it to be as sharp as possible, which is great because everybody knows that um, on camera phones and low lighting situations for 99.9% .9 of the devices out there, sucks. It sucks, it sucks, it sucks, it sucks. It sucks. And so it's great to see that Samsung is kind of, um, they're aware of that issue and they're like, you know what, here's a feature to try and help you guys out in those situations, which I absolutely love. 
Um, moving on from there, go ahead and take a look at the uh, applications. Now, I have obviously loaded some things, Star Wars Angry Birds, which I've done a video on. If you haven't watched it, check it out. Kind of show you some of the cool characters. Um, but we've got a lot of the same features that we had in um, the Galaxy S3. You know, you got your S voice, which obviously you're going to want to disable the double tap of the home button to activate that. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing with a pretty crazy amount of um, home button lag, um, even though there already is still some home button lag, even after that's been disabled. Um, now, we've got the video player here. And um, I don't have anything in here, but it's kind of neat about this video player because you can do a lot of things with the stylus. The stylus is really... Um, well, basically, let's put it this way. The stylus in the note, in the original note, um, I think, to me, was a gimmick. Now, they brought in the note, too, and the stylus is, in my opinion, 50% of the device. And then, again, this is kind of why I wouldn't make this, again, um, my daily driver. I just don't like styluses. This isn't the year 2001. We're not using, you know, Palm Pilots anymore. Um, and there really isn't a whole lot that I can't do or that I can do on my device. Um... You know, like basically I can use my finger for everything. I don't need a stylus. I don't. The stylus is useful for gimmicky things like scrubbing through videos to get to a point that you want to watch or um, hovering the stylus over um, gallery thumbnails to bring up a, 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 a really small but slightly larger um, thumbnail of that particular picture, which I think is silly. I mean, you can see it right there. If you want to look at it, click on it. Um, that's just my opinion, and I unfocus the camera. Sweet. Um, and uh, as well as drawing pictures and taking notes. Now, in my opinion, the only thing that the note would come in handy for, for me, for my use, is maybe writing notes down. But even then, I feel that I can still write the notes down faster using S Memo and a keyboard than using the stylus. That's just my opinion. There are some other functionalities that you guys are probably going to be freaking out. But you can do this. But you can do that. I know. I know. But do you really, really need to use those? Yes, it's cool to have those additional features. But it's just not something that's practical for me. It's not something that I'd actually use. You know, I wouldn't use the S Pen to scrub through a video. I'm not going to use the S Pen to take screenshots of anything. You know, it's just something that I'm not going to do. I just, I just don't do it. I don't really send screenshots a whole lot. But that's my opinion. That's my usage of a device not yours and it may differ um, the speakerphone on this thing has been ridiculous not speakerphone I'm sorry but the speaker on this has been absolutely ridiculous it is so friggin loud I am really really pleased with it I you know I was actually pleased with the Galaxy S3 but it wasn't the best I would have to say Motorola is has the best um, built-in speakers you know not like the the earpiece speaker but um, the speaker on the back of the phone is the, this one is really really loud now when we're talking about battery life um, I'm on Bell's LTE network right now unfortunately on this device where I'm located I don't get the best LTE um, speeds and as a result when you get low LTE speeds and your radio is trying to connect and look for a strong signal it's gonna drain the battery Okay, when I first got this device and I powered it up to 100% and I played with it for 24 hours on LTE, it drained, it drained really quickly. It didn't actually last 24 hours, it's more like eight, okay? Pathetic. Now, if you are in an area that gets great LTE coverage, you probably don't have to worry about that battery draining as quickly. All I did was went into the um, wireless settings and shut off LTE, turned it into HSPA plus only, and now, considering this is a 3100 milliamp battery, the thing is like the size of my hand. Um, the thing lasts so long. I'm probably getting about a day and a half, close to two days out of it, depending on what I'm doing. And that is impressive. To not have to charge a device for approximately two days, give or take, um, that is mind blowing. Now, the display itself has been really impressive. Um, the pixels, because the display is a little bigger, the DPI is going to be a little bit more spread out, but you really can't notice it. And that quad core processor, coupled with the two gigs of RAM, provides an absolutely lightning speed, uh, lightning fast. Um, user experience. Now, you add Jelly Bean on top of that, pff, forget about it. You've got one stupid, blisteringly fast phone. If you're into a phone that you absolutely have to have the latest and greatest, the biggest phone, you want a head turn on, you do want something silly like a stylus, again, silly, my opinion, the Galaxy Note 2 is definitely the way to go. A little bit expensive, in my opinion. In fact, a lot of the devices these days, when you're comparing it to Nexus devices, are a little bit expensive, in my opinion. But man, I really believe you're getting what you pay for with this phone. Um, 
you got great screen real estate, a fantastic camera with fantastic camera software. You've got amazing top tier level internal specs. You've got the biggest display in a smartphone on the market right now. Um, you've got LTE speeds, you've got a wicked huge battery, and you have compatibility with almost every application on the market, and that's the beautiful thing about Samsung Galaxy devices. But that's it for now, guys. This has been my first impressions of this Galaxy Note 2 um, running on the Bell LTE network, although I'm using HSP Plus at the moment. <laughs> um, and, uh, be, you know, make sure you stay tuned because I will be doing an actual final review of this, my opinion of it, and so on. Um, again, this has been my opinion of first impressions of the device. Yours may vary. I don't want to hear any flaming in the comments. Everybody's opinion is different. But that's it for now, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. Um, if you like the video, please show me some love by hitting that likes button down below and subscribe for more videos like this in the future if you haven't already done so. We do have videos five days a week, and we have have tons of crap to show you. It's not crap. I shouldn't have used those words. It's awesome stuff. This is the best channel on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> this is bad. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers, guys.